Right. We got here in end, mate, didn't we, mate? It was a little bit late with Mark, as always. Uh, not, like we, uh, <laughs> not like Not like him at all. Uh, but we're here now uh, with UFC star Mark Diakise. Uh, thank you for joining us, mate. No problem. Um, got a lot to talk about, a lot going on, a lot going on in the UFC world, a lot of trending topics I want to ask you about. Obviously, I want to get into your, your career, yeah. what you've done, how you came up in through all the ranks, hit the UFC. I want to talk about what you've got coming up. Um, but first of all, we've got to do the sponsor shout out. Yeah. Um, Manscaped. Do you know what you, you know what this is, don't you? The Manscaped stuff. Obviously, what better way to promote a UFC sponsored product with a UFC fighter? So, number one in male grooming. Now, this yeah. is new bit of kit. This is called uh, the Lawnmower 4.0. Now, I had the 3.0 recently, and I thought that was good, but I uh, treated my scrotum area yeah. to the to the, <laughs> to the 4.0 and uh, you gotta hook me up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, serious, mate. Honest, yeah. this thing. Honestly, this is. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Full body, obviously. I you haven't used that one, have you? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, this is a clean one. This is a clean one. But uh, it is, yeah. it's good for your full body, obviously. Yeah. Don't, not your face, not after yeah. it's been all over your dick and balls and all the rest of it and that. But yeah. it's a uh, full body shaver. It doesn't snag the hair whatsoever. It's amazing. There's lots of other good products. Um, they've got like a nose and ear hair trimmer. They've got like a little travel kits and all kinds of stuff like that. There's loads yeah. of decent stuff. Um, any man who's like serious about keeping herself groomed and stuff like that. Thing is, I did one arm earlier and then look, I forgot to do the other arm because Kate was shouting at me. Get out of the shower and I'm in a rush. It's all like, fucking yeah. hell, I've got one hairy arm yeah. now. Um, but yeah, this is um, the, the, the new one, the 4.0. There's a code kicking it, twenty uh, percent off all the products on there. There's all go have a look on the Manscaped website. There's all sorts you can buy on there. Use the code kicking it, you'll get twenty percent off. Right, job done. Let's get into it. Um, Mark, obviously you've uh, you've had fucking you bounced onto the MMA scene. You've had an amazing career. Yeah. Let's start right back at the beginning. Though. Obviously you're from Congo. Congo, yeah, Congo, Congo right? Yeah, see, yeah. What were what were that like growing up in Congo? Now, obviously when you moved to England, what were that like having to transition into a, a different country and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, obviously. We'll come here to have a better life. So it was, it, it was, it was what it, for. I didn't know any better. You know what I mean. I lived there. Uh, it was just, if anything, it was just. Now what I know is like, I can't even explain it. You know what I mean. Mm. Kind of stuck. It's like it's difficult life out there. Yeah. It's just you don't you don't have like what we have here. Like for example, that when we train here, we have got all the equipments and stuff. There, you just you. you you, you, you're not given a chance yeah. to start a career, so it's very difficult. How old were you when you moved anything. to England then? I moved here when I was uh, 12 years old, but okay. yeah, I came. That's still like pretty stuck. I, I thought you were a bit younger than that, but I said a long time no, ago. Yeah, 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 I wasn't that young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I moved there. I actually got a play with my uncle's son. Yeah, so I call him dad because I've grown up with him and uh, he brought me over. And uh, it's always been like that. So, What were it like in Congo growing up then as uh, up until you were 12? What, how, how was that? What was that like? In Congo, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't know, I don't know much because it was just more of a me and whatever I could, you know what I mean, whatever I could get my hands on. Uh, my parents were there. Uh, my mom, obviously, she's a single woman, and it was a bit difficult for her. So yeah. I was just, I was going back and forth with uh, my dad, my mom. I was just over the place. So it made sense for me. Obviously, my uncle's here. And yeah. I think he wanted a better life, better life for me and my mom. So yeah, I had yeah. to come over. So. You've obviously moved to England. What were the transition like? Because you moved for a, to a, r a rough city, really, as well. Yeah. Don Doncaster's a r rough city, isn't it? <laughs> if anyone doesn't know it's about Doncaster. It's gone worse, though. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty decent. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> true, it's bad. Yeah, true, it's true. Bad. Um, so you yeah. moved to Doncaster, didn't you? And what were the, the transition like there? Did, did you struggle to fit in when you got into England? Yeah. Did you end up getting in fights and stuff like that? How, how was that? Yeah. I go into a lot of fights, actually. It's Jordan said, I've got to ask you about that, actually. <laughs> yeah. He said, I go yeah. into a lot of fights. The reason being, because I didn't speak English. I remember one time yeah, in class and teacher said something to me. She said, do you understood? I said, no. And, <laughs> like, <laughs> and the whole class laughed at her and I got done for it, but I didn't actually know what to say. I didn't know, I didn't understood what she was telling me. Yeah. And uh, it got me into a lot of trouble. Like a, a lot of lads were trying to start on me and they even give you a guy who's always supposed to help you when you move to a new school. And he tried to bully me in front of people. Like, Fucking hell. yeah, pushing the table in front of me. So I just picked the table, launched at him. And uh, I'd keep getting in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, because Jordan said, he said, I've got to ask you about, the, the, didn't people like wait for you to fight you after school and all crazy shit like that, like all yeah. the time and stuff like that? Yeah, I was fighting a lot. Yeah. Mainly, like I remember one time, I had like three lads try to jump me, but I always got told by my mum, the matter how many they are, you just got to hurt one. Yeah. <laughs> and I had, yeah. That, <laughs> I had that one guy that Bubba just keep hitting him, keep hitting him, and uh, it kind of carried on from school from then. 
you're you're obviously like you have you always been because you're a really strong athletic guy. Have, yeah. Were you always like physically strong when you were younger and stuff like that? Uh, I think so. I'm I'm kind of like I think um my background my like my mom and that she did like marathons run. Okay. Uh, my dad did a bit of wrestling in Africa, so I feel like got some good, good some, solid yeah, genes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something that I was just meant to do, and uh, I just obviously I got a better opportunity here, and that's why I've made it where it is where I am. S sticking with that, as you went through school, did did this just carry on all the way through school? Then all this this fighting constantly. <laughs> so what it, what happened? Because I got kicked out of school. I think I turned 18, 16, whatever. I kicked out of school, but because I made a name outside in school fighting and. People follow me outside school, say, oh, you fight. So people are starting on me and I just start fighting everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Man. What, um, what did, is that what maybe led you towards getting into martial arts then, would you say? Or was that, or was that always yeah. something you, you thought about before all this? Was no, it? my mentality was more of like, when I start, uh, I feel like I was fighting the reason being, cause I'm like, I don't have no brother, older sister or whatever to back me. So yeah, I gotta yeah. back myself and uh, I just kept fighting. But fighting, it was more of a, because cause outside school, I fought so much and I kept thinking, I'm going to go to prison. Yeah. Because I've been, I went to court, I think, seven times. And every time I go there, I'll climb over, see if the a van's there. <laughs> 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 when that van's there, I'm thinking, I'm going to get sent down here. But I knew, obviously, coming from Africa to here, I knew the difference. Like, I got to sort myself out and I was trying to get out of trouble. So I thought, maybe try MMA. Mm. Try, I didn't even know what I was getting into. Like, yeah. just try some social martial art. It might help me out. And uh, I did, I did, I did you watch much MMA or anything back then? How old were you when you started that? I started when I was 17. Oh, that's pretty old yeah, as well. Like, so you haven't really yeah. been training that long to no. see where you've got to as well, no, really, have you? I know. That's what people don't understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That's yeah. impressive like, because uh, Leroy Murphy, who was also a, an English UFC fighter, he's, yeah. he's got a similar story. He, he was getting in trouble and stuff, and he started late as well. Yeah. So to have two guys who have both got to the UFC and it's from like, to the Ralph similar area. That's pretty yeah. impressive, really, if, to yeah. say that. How old are you now? 25, 20, 28, 28. 28 now. Yeah. So yeah, 17, like, 10 years. 10 years, so yeah. That, that is, it's impressive, really. What uh, what gym did you go to and stuff, and what were it like? Like the first time yeah. you walked through the gym door, did you not know what to expect? What happened? Yeah. And did they take to you? Did they like, welcome you? Were it a bit? Yeah. Well, like, for example, like I play, I think I played football before, but obviously my uncle was a bit like that, so he didn't really take me to like training and stuff. But where we lived, it was the gym just around the corner called Doncaster Martial Arts Centre. And uh, the reason I kept going back was obviously the guy kept welcoming me. When I, when I got there first, but like, he, he's talented, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that made me feel welcome because they, they kept telling me how good I am and I kept going back. And that's when it all started. What gym was that then? Uh, Doncaster Martial Arts Centre. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to go back to what you said earlier, because obviously, how long did it take you to pick up English? <laughs> you, you said when you came over, you didn't speak yeah, much English, it, and obviously that must have took a while for you to. It took me at least, I'm gonna say at least three years. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah obviously yeah. I can't speak any other languages. So I'm not, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, when I used to live in Thailand, yeah. I kept like, I got, I know, I left two years and I know about five words. Yeah. Yeah, so. I think the best way I learned English was uh, it was this show, this this guy with a red nose, I forgot his name, on CBBs. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. Yeah, watching cartoons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every morning before school, I'd watch that, and I uh, just how I picked up words because it would tell like this is a cop. It would just change different words. Yeah, and, uh, that's how I learned. Wow, that's yeah. mad. Um, going back to the the MMA side of it, then how long was you in the gym for before like the coach had like realized? Obviously, you got a bit of talent, yeah. and how long were it before you had your first fight? And how, how did that come about? How did you feel about it all? Yeah, I, if I can remember, my first fight, it was no. I went to the gym first. I think I trained for about maybe two months, but I left because I didn't have no money. And uh, the coach, actually Neil Wayne, uh, Neil White, sorry, he said to me to come back. As long as I clean the mats, I can train for free. Yeah. And I end up buying equipments like gloves and stuff, and I just stay forever. So I think maybe six months. Okay, that's yeah, not long, really, months, is it? Yeah, because so, I, I I did the interclub at first. Yeah. And they said to me, I think you're ready for a fight. So I, I, I went to the amateur. You, well, your stand up amateur. must have already been good from fucking knocking no. out all them pikes that you've been really <laughs> into knocking out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. For some reason, I, I wasn't actually. A, the gym I went to wasn't a striking gym. Did not. It was a grappling gym. Yeah. But mainly, it was just like the way we trained back in the day, we're like, we'll have just, we'll get in and say, okay, run and full metal jacket on. And just start sparring. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. Like, yeah, it sure. wasn't like much technique. But obviously, that's how much that's how much we knew about MMA. So, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, 
So it was basically you were just learning as you were going, learning from sparring and, and doing yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So what, what happened in your first fight then? Who was that against where? My and, first fight yeah. is funny if you can see the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up uh, kicking the guy at the bottom because I didn't know the rules and this guy kept trying to grapple me like, I didn't know much about it, but it was, it was different experience. I think it was in Grims Grimsby. Who oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's when my first yeah. fight was. It was pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how many fights was it then before you started getting a bit of a reputation for yourself? Because obviously you, yeah. before you, Bama, you went into before UFC, oh, yeah. wasn't it? And that's obviously that one of the biggest, yeah. biggest ones in England, isn't it, Bama? Yeah. Um, how long was that before you started getting a, a rep for yourself and yeah. stuff? How, I made I made a name. I feel like I made a name more of a Don Casadon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, CSFC with Danny Mitchell. Well, that, those shows are still going strong them as yeah, well. They're, they're always strong. a good like. Well, back then he's actually on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were putting it on TV, so it was pretty good. That's why I feel like I made my name. I was nine and as an amateur. Yeah. And uh, I, will, I held three British titles, and that's why I start. Yeah, now I, I believe that I can actually do something with it. So when did you go pro then? How long was that before you went pro? So nine fights and beating nine then you fights. went into pro ranks? No, I was injured right. for about 10 months. Fucking hell, what did you, what did you do? <laughs> uh, my knee. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, just knee for 10 months and I couldn't do anything. And uh, when I came back, I couldn't even get matched up because I think it was weird because amateurs, you couldn't get like a fight. Some like we were picking the fights with the amateurs. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. didn't really make sense. So my, my coach, uh, Neil Wayne, said to me, uh, I think you're ready for pro. So I went pro. And when was that then? When were your first pro fight and who were that against? I really can't remember, but I know it was in Harris Neil Fitoy. That was in uh, near near Newcastle. Yeah. My first pro fight. That was the first round finish. And yeah. from then you went on a, a good winning streak, didn't you? Yeah. And, um, obviously, you, me and you fought one of the same guys. I remember you fought Danny Welsh. I was reading Danny Welsh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I fought Danny, Danny Welsh. Welsh yeah. I fought him about. Yeah. We were both 15, I think yeah. we were. I thought you were like, tough, were they? Tough mate, yeah, tough guy, mate. Uh, we, yeah. we were both 15. Yeah. I fought him in fucking a little uh, working men's club yeah. in, in Wakefield. We fought him. I think I fought him with Don Casado. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah. I was looking at your record yeah. earlier and I said, yeah. oh, fuck, I fought that. Yeah. Um, so you went on a real good winning streak then, and that obviously like pushed you towards the, the Bama title, didn't it, with, uh, from that big knockout you had yeah. with Kay Musa. Yeah. There were a bit of blood, bad blood there between yeah. you two at the time yeah, as well, yeah, wasn't yeah. there? Just yeah. talk to us a little bit about that fight and yeah. the build-up and the bad yeah. blood and et cetera. That was pretty fun. Uh, main, so what I was making my name, and for some reason, obviously I, I felt like I was doing it for fun, so it was fun to me, like anybody, I'd fight, if I, for example, a prospect, I'd want to fight them. Yeah. It, it wasn't because of money or anything. I just enjoyed fighting. Yeah. So I was just picking up whoever, whoever I think is the best, I'll fight them. And uh, I had Kane's name. But to me, I didn't, because I don't, I don't write, even now, I don't want to look in a fighters or, oh, oh, I know this, I know that. I don't even know any fighters. Yeah, yeah. I just know that I fight and yeah, that's it. Yeah. I might know John Jones, Canelo, whatever. That's it, but I don't even know all the, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so you don't, you don't really look into, no, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. And uh, obviously, because I said, I don't know who Kane was raised. I think he got mad over that. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, he didn't like it. So that's when the beef started. And uh, But I had fun with it. I had fun with it because I'm thinking, who's this guy trying to fight me? Yeah. Like, who is he? So, so you think he got a bit too emotionally invested with it yeah, all? Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did, yeah. But to me, back then, like, like literally, it was more of a, like, I couldn't see anybody beating me like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because nine and as an amateur... So I was really telling him what I felt like I would do to him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, that you, was it. then you yeah. did it. Yeah, yeah. And then I did it, well, yeah. Uh, oh, do you know what? We should have had that ready to pull up, Schoolie, because we posted yeah. that on his page of a day that were, uh, <laughs> because that was a bomb. That, that was for the Bama title as well, oh, wasn't Bama it? Bama title, yeah. And uh, to talk to us, how, how did that feel afterwards? Because you, you, the celebration, you, the back yeah. you're on the cage <laughs> and all that. Um, that must have fucking, yeah. you must have realised then, do you know what? I'm going yeah. somewhere here. Yeah, because my fight was uh, mainly, was because I felt like on Bama, I don't know, for some reason, I always felt like I was getting used to try to, Bring up, bring up other prospects, yeah. and I really hate. And I felt like I wasn't fighting for the promotion; I was fighting against the promotion. So that's why I felt I did so well because yeah. I was like, "Okay, give me this guy, give me this guy, I'll fight him." And uh, I, it was a uh, Jack McGann. That was a tough oh, Jack fight. McGann. Yeah, yeah cause they were trying to build him up. Weren't they? they were trying to build yeah, him up, yeah. but we were going to use me to get him to. Uh, nah, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. So I beat Jack, and uh, I knocked out uh, another guy before K Musa. But then K Musa came to me saying. This chin don't get knocked out. <laughs> you know what I mean? As soon as I was saying that, so I was thinking, yeah, I'm gonna try and knock him out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that's what happened. I knocked him out, and obviously it worked out good. And I was that was the best feeling because obviously it it has it got a bit of hype in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that you got a big following yeah, around yeah, that area. Big following, it? and that kind of gave me like all the limelight as well through him as well. So it was pretty. Is that when the UFC came knocking after that? Then what? Yeah. What was that a bit surreal when that actually happened? We were yeah. like, shit, I'm gonna <laughs> fucking be in the UFC. Crazy sound. I always 
when I had that fight, I was thinking maybe in two, three years I'll be in the UFC. Yeah. I didn't expect to be in the UFC that soon. Next minute I'm getting a phone call, I was like, what? <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you went on a bit of a rampage from when you yeah. started there, didn't you? Three, yeah. fights, Three fights, two KOs. Yeah. One of the KOs was absolutely scandalous again. Yeah. I put his name down there. Timu Pakalan. I had to write that down. I couldn't remember. I couldn't yeah, remember. That, that's one. You were, that one knockout was absolutely fucking disgraceful yeah. because he's like, he were asleep yeah. literally as soon as you hit him. Yeah. There was obviously three fights in a row. Then you talked to us about just those three fights, and now yeah. that war just like going through that. Which fight? Winning one. Just done. all of them. Just the first yeah. three fights you have seen. You got that big Edison, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, every fight so I was going in, like it was obviously the mindset, like can't be beaten. Like I couldn't yeah. see myself losing to anybody, and it, it was just I was having fun. But I feel like it's like for example, Bama. I could talk shit. I could do what I want. Yeah. But you get to you get to bigger shows like UFC. You start to get judged by people. Yeah. And yeah. that starts to play in your mind. So it was, it, when I got to three and zero, and it started saying things, I always felt like I told I say what I want because that's how I felt. Yeah. It wasn't like being cocky. I just knew that I could fight. Yeah. And that was it. But you start getting judged and stuff. Oh, he's doing this and. That kind of play, plays in your mind. Is that why you'd like stay at the weigh-ins? You used to be really aggressive at the weigh-ins. Yeah. Is that why you stopped yeah. like doing that sort of no, thing? No, it's just stuff, more or? of a, like I know what it takes now. Like yeah, yeah it's more of a it's, it's a sport, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Respectful, but yeah. I always felt like it was more of a when I did that, like trash talk, I, I really I, I knew when it worked and when it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that obviously you got yeah. on the Kane skin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you knew without working. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like certain guys, I'm like, yeah, I've got him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the moment getting mad, I'm like, yeah, I've got him. And you see me, you see him in the eyes in the cage, like they're really scared of you, like yeah. you were feeling it. But obviously after that, and then I obviously I got two, I went three, three losses in a row. Yeah, yeah. But that was more of like more of a I felt I was starting to learn about the sport because I never lost before. Yeah. How did and that feel? You felt, how did you take that as your first loss? Obviously, you've not even lost as an amateur. Yeah. You've gone nine and oh, and then you've gone this big, crazy win streak. Mm. How did you deal with the first loss? Was, did you take yeah. it as a learning or did it hit you hard? How was that? Uh, I took it as a learning, but I felt like, okay, I need to be out straight away. Yeah. You know, I need to get back to where I was. And that's why I feel like I messed up. Yeah. You should have took a bit more, yeah, time, more to time to go away, yeah. work on things and stuff. Uh -huh. Were you still training at Doncaster MMA? Yeah. No, I went to Manchester. Right, right yeah, okay. Yeah, ASW. I was training in Manchester. Right, again. right, okay. Yeah, because Don Cassio, like, just, I didn't have no sparring partners in the gym. We, you know, we, we, didn't much, we didn't know much about MMA like that. Yeah. So I went to uh, Manchester. But I just felt like I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't learn much from that, you know what I mean? So I moved over there. But people started to judge you over that, and it kind of played in my mind. And what I was losing... Obviously, three fights. The first one, it was like, ah, oh, whatever. That was a split decision, yeah. that one, wasn't it? The first yeah, one you lost. Yeah. So obviously, that was a real close fight yeah. and still so, yeah. Uh -huh. And I thought, no, I need to get back in straight away. Yeah. And I did that again, lost again yeah. to Dan Hooker. To be fair, Dan Hooker's like, yeah. obviously, a, yeah, look top, at the yeah, top, yeah. top level fighter as well, uh -huh. so. And I feel like I fought some of the top names, which to be honest, yeah. like some of the big prospects. And uh, obviously, you know yourself, I feel like I'm getting that experience now where I feel like I'm ready to take on the world now. Yeah. But I was just learning. It was a learning curve for me because imagine I was with my ex, uh, Mrs. well for like eight years, and I, w I went to America after three fights. I was winning three fights, so I felt like, I felt like people were talking about me again. Oh, he can't wrestle. He can't wrestle. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I maybe need to learn some wrestling. So I and went. This to when you went to ATT, ATT in America, yeah. American top team. So yeah. like, the, obviously. This gym has got some serious, serious guys yeah, in yeah. there. So obviously you've took yourself out of your comfort zone yeah. and gone to learn when the best guys, obviously Dustin Poirier is yeah, there and stuff like that. Yeah. What, what's, what were it like just getting it going to tour that gym? Obviously, yeah. Was this after your first three wins? or was this First three wins, yeah. yeah so you I went to ATT, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Talk about what was that like? No, that's my first two wins. Yeah. And my third one with Timo, I was there. Right. But like I, when I went there, I felt like here, my striking was great. But yeah. there, even though I was learning wrestling, like now nah, I've got good wrestling. Yeah. But I wasn't progressing. Like I was, my striking was going down. My wrestling was going up. I wasn't meeting anything. You know right, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So even when I was losing, like what I took from them guys training with them guys, Dusty Pore, Masvidal, all that, it just made me realize, okay, as a professional to gain the UFC, this is why you got to train. This is what you need to have as a team. It told me a lot. Yeah. Even though, you know what I mean? Even though I was losing, but I was gaining something from it as well. So I felt like, okay, it was time to come back in. Trying to get my own team together. What were it like sparring with uh, Masvidal and Dustin? Do you have any like proper yeah. dust ups? Like proper <laughs> like? No, mainly I sparred Dustin. It was mainly uh, I, I think I helped him for Anthony Pettis' fight. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. we were talking about that me and school era because yeah. obviously he's got he's flamboyant in yeah, yeah, Pettis, yeah. Pettis yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, you can do all the yeah, the, all, you, that, you, yeah, all, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. style of stuff. So yeah, I was helping him, 
But only thing I start noticing, obviously he's got money and now he's, you know what I mean? He's, he's, at, he's at top of the food chain. Yeah. And I feel like, okay, I'm at ATT, it's a big gym. I'm learning wrestling. But when it comes to sparring, it will have like three coaches. And I'll have like some, rank, <laughs> some <laughs> guy I don't know, you know what I mean? Really? Yeah, it will kind of like that. Right. So I start to feel like, Okay, I'm giving all this time. I'm I'm helping him sparring. He's getting great sparring, but not getting much back. Yeah, what am I getting? Yeah, yeah. So that's when I felt like, okay, I'm I'm losing, and this it's time to maybe change change things a little bit. So obviously you're coming off the back of them three losses, the three wins and three losses. You must have been starting to feel a bit of pressure now after this. Yeah. The fight with um with Duffy, you come uh, yeah. the, that was there were a lot on the line Duffy, there, yeah. weren't there? Yeah, did lot, you did lot. you feel the pressure going into that fight because you performed very very well in that fight? Yeah, you fought almost a perfect fight, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously you won on points. Just talk to us. How did you feel before that fight? And how would the feeling afterwards when you won? Before, like, before that fight, literally, I was so I was like in my down. Like, I split my missus for eight years, and I was very down. I came back from US. I even started living with my manager. Yeah, <laughs> I lived with him because I felt like he said to me, "The way you're feeling, like, I don't feel you should be by yourself." Yeah, because obviously I have family here, but it's all over the, over Europe, like France, Holland. Yeah. So in Doncaster, literally me, and my uncle, but my uncle moved to London. Do you know what I mean? So it's literally me. And I was so depressed. My, my manager said to me, "You know, you must move in with me." Fucking hell. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I was in for like nine months, and I really like. I started to learn a lot by myself. Like, okay, this is what life. This is what it is, isn't it? This is what I gotta do. And uh, I just started to regain myself. And uh, it would Duffy fight. I felt like okay. Even I started working my, my mental side. Like I was like, okay, I'm ready for this. Yeah. And when I went to a Duffy fight, I was like, it's do or die. Like I, I know what I'm made of. Like this, I know what I do this for. Yeah. I'm gonna go there. You know, trying to perform. Uh, obviously, your reaction after the fight, like you, yeah. a, lot, a lot of lot, a lot of came weight. out. Yeah, didn't you? Like, did it feel like the weight just come straight off your shoulders? Yeah, a lot of were... weight because I felt like people were like watching me, like waiting for my downfall. But yeah. like, they don't even understand me. We don't know where I come from. We know why I'm doing this. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, we know what's behind this. So it really like got into me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and after that, again, uh, you fought again after that, and that was another another good win. Yeah. Wasn't it? That what was that one against uh, Land of Nata. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another good win. Yeah. So you started to get your your confidence and stuff back here. Yeah. Um, then the last fight on Fight Island, how, how were that? Because obviously you had no, you got one fight of the night. It was yeah. a fucking very good fight. You got yeah. the, the the pay bonus and stuff. Didn't yeah. you? you lost a close, very close fight yeah. against um, the guy. Of... Yeah, but who loses it? Tag Muay Thai. <laughs> he fight, he guy. fights <laughs> yeah, very crazy. Mate, he yeah. does some matrix shit. That yeah, guy. I don't think he's got guy. a spine. You know the way yeah. he does that. <laughs> Honestly, he leans yeah. back. I've, I've seen yeah. him do it in Thai boxing fights. I know. And, um, but you got the. You still. Although that were a loss, it was a fight of the night. Yeah. You got the extra pay bonus. Um, but I want to ask you, Fight Island, what were it like with no crowd there? That must have been weird. Did you did you did it matter or did, yeah. you, did you feel like you need the buzz of the crowd out with that? Yeah, it was weird that come even the fight alone to get that fight. I had because I started fight coming about January, I was supposed to fight uh and the COVID started. I had three fights change whatever cancelled yeah. Jai Herb I remember it. obviously me and you we'd be both trained at Four Corner yeah. Gym and every time I'll come into you <laughs> vote out you went yeah I've got yeah, a fight yeah. I'd come in two yeah. days later go well what, what were you go <laughs> cancelled again and it kept happening yeah. to me as well so yeah. me and you were just like every time going I'm going fucking crazy yeah. I'm going fucking insane what's going on uh, so yeah obviously that must have been fucking fu messing with your head and yeah, stuff yeah it was messing because they're like nah, and then at the time when we were doing that I was where I went with Danny Mitchell yeah I was going there as well and obviously, <clears throat> in the gym, there's nobody to train with. It was just me, Danny Mitchell, and uh, Rico. Yeah, Rico, Rico Franco. Yeah. You know, he's a <clears throat> bare knuckle. Yeah, yeah, bare yeah. knuckle. So, it's feasible. It's a kick, kickboxer, and he's yeah. kicking. So, it made it, I just did what I, I could yeah. to, just to get to get, get a fight. Because I'm like, three fights, I'm not, I haven't had a fight being cancelled. I've been to Holland, came back, no fight. Oh, so. yeah, you, I yeah. Uh, you forgot you keep going. But that like, Hemmer's gym, <laughs> Hemmer's you were going gym, to, yeah. What was that like there? Because you must have got some crazy sparring with them guys. They were crazy sparring. Because they just try and fucking kill you, mate. <laughs> they were crazy the, sparring. Uh, literally, yeah. they have a fight every time they spar. It's I just know. a fight in big gloves. Literally. Yeah. You, get, you get knocked up and get dragged to one side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, they don't mess around them bunch no, boys. What, around. what fighters were in there when you were there? We were sparring. What K1 guys uh, were there? I sparred uh, Anas Karkash, is a called a Sniper. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Mara. McGregorian. Ma Ma yeah, McGregorian. <laughs> uh, Haru. Mara is, is a good fighter. Yeah, yeah. very good fighter. He tried, <laughs> he tried to take your head off. Yeah. His, his combos is like. When you see him, it's like the code of that Hammers gym. Yeah. The way his, his, his timing is totally. 
totally off yeah. to what I'm used to. Yeah, so yeah. So it was pretty, pretty different. But what I'm not being used to is the calf kicks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's why I got so good at it. Yeah. Cause You're good, man. When last time we sparred, you did yeah. that to me. And I'm like, man, you're going to break my legs. Stop yeah, doing that shit. <laughs> I know why, but it was, it was weird. Like, they were like, how do you block this? But I only got good at it because I'm like, every team was trying to get me calf, yeah. calf, calf. Yeah, and yeah. And that's why I, got, I, did, I did pretty well with the calf. Especially against those guys because all they try and do is you punch your head off. Punch so your head off, yeah. They're so heavy on the front uh -huh. leg. Yeah. And that's why they're working. While yeah. we're just on this, I wanted to ask you anyway, why is it, do you think people are fucking doing this wrong? By the, that's why they keep breaking the legs and shit in with you at some of the guys who have done it. Or do you think, yeah. uh, just what's happening here? Because... I, when they I, kick, I don't feel like they set it up. Yeah, like, they're not other. Yeah, yeah, they're just booting knees out and stuff like. Because people yeah. keep asking me this, what they're doing yeah. wrong, and I'm just saying there's no thought going into I it. Know. The the need to be if you're gonna do a, a calf kick, like it's yeah. my thoughts. Yeah, you have to wait till the person's got all his weight on his front leg when you know yeah. he's not gonna be able to lift his yeah. knee up at all. Yeah, and then go for it. Yeah. Or you have to change the angle a little bit. Or yeah. you have to set it up with punches. Mm. Is that how you how you would go I about think it? They don't do a calf kick. They try to go for a, like a low kick. Yeah, you know on the thigh, but. I think when you check that, it's kind of dead because you're actually close to the knee. Yeah. I go low. Yeah. So it's yeah. behind the muscle. Yeah. It's kind of different. And I feel like they just, I can't even do that, the low kick. Yeah. I struggle. I have to do calf. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I feel I think that's safer. But the way they're going about it is, it's not a setup. It's just like, yeah. Yeah. There's no, they're not aiming it anywhere no. or anything. Yeah. It's just sort of like in the middle of both things, yeah. isn't it? And, it's and just, you see it coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, that's why everyone keeps snapping yeah, the fucking yeah. leg in half. I think that's the reason. Yeah, honestly, um, I've lost. Well, I don't even remember what we were talking about. Everybody, oh yeah, that's what we're on about. <laughs> we're getting you know, on about you moving to four corners. Obviously, you're like you're your four corners gym now. You've got a real good team there. Yeah, aren't you? really. Do good. you feel that's like your home now there? Because yeah. you seem like that's obviously you. There's uh, Jack, there's Justin, there's yeah. all them boys, and they're yeah. some very very good up and coming fighters. Them. Yeah. I, I, do you enjoy it there? Because obviously under John, yeah. you look sick on pads with John oh, and stuff. Thank and, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now the thing is, like, I went there first. I, I kept watching John, obviously with you. Uh, and obviously with lads and that, and I, I thought maybe I'll give it a try. Uh, and John, I, the way I like about John is, is like I've been I've been about I've been everywhere. I think even he knew is that I travel I'm moving different moving different gyms. But what I like about John is a coach, but he also can be a friend to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I respect that because like I respect him as a coach, and but I can also like talk to me if I need something. Mm. Why I've been to other gyms, I can't name anybody, but it's just like, you feel scared. I don't, I don't feel like I no more. Like, <clears throat> to talk to a coach, you're like, uh, shit, yeah, you know what I mean? It shouldn't be like that. It like shouldn't you, be like yeah, that, you, yeah. you should be able to ask anything of your of your coach, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh -huh. Like, the, the the bond you have between, like, uh, your coach, not just a pad man, yeah, not just, just a, like, yeah. but you said it should, like, it's, uh -huh. a, it's a close, it's a close mix, relationship, yeah, yeah. So it's a fight. I gotta, I gotta, you gotta feel what I'm feeling. Yeah, you've got to trust him with your <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah, because you know, you're, uh -huh. you're putting your life on yeah. the line. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you've got to trust him yeah. with your life, literally. Yeah, but like just for going there, and I truly believe, like, because the way I respect him, it's not. It's not like trying to impress well, him. But listen, with John, there's no fucking games, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? <laughs> if he's not happy with what you're <laughs> doing, he'll slap you. He'll fucking <laughs> he'll have you out of the gym. Uh, he don't fuck around. Yeah, does he don't it? fuck around. And, and that's that's yeah. what some people need. And uh -huh. it's, it's, it's a great yeah. thing to have that. Even like I have a habit, like obviously late all time, but <laughs> 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 I know not to be late on his classes. Well, the reason being, I just, I just like the way he is with his, his fight. Is he talks to them, and he's not saying, "Oh, I'm, I'll do everything." Do you know what I mean? He knows he can't do teach you MMA, so yeah. he'll bring guys in for you. Yeah, he'll teach you this. You know what I mean? Whereas other gyms, like, no, I'll teach you everything. Yeah, and yeah. He's not arrogant enough to think yeah, that he knows that, but he's, that, he's yeah. obviously one of the he's one of probably the best the best padman I've ever yeah, worked with. I think definitely. he's unbelievable. You see him on pads now, I feel yeah. so like your floor he, now, yeah. and yeah, his pads build my confidence. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just him talking, certain things he'll say. He doesn't probably, probably realise this, but he's building my confidence. Yeah, like, yeah. I know now I can strike. I know I can stand with anybody like that. Mate, him. I'd love to see yeah. you just stand with anyone, mate, yeah. honestly, because you've obviously got that one punch KO power, yeah. but now the way you're flowing with your Flo combinations yeah. and stuff like that, and I can't wait till you see you put the combination yeah, put the together, kick, the yeah. kicks on and everything, mate. I'm excited yeah. to see and you. And that's one thing I, I feel like I was struggling with before. Like, yeah. I would jab, but I couldn't put combos together. Like, I didn't really know. Whereas now I feel very confident to get in and trying to knock a guy out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Putting combos together without getting tired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so your next fight, uh, 4th of September in yeah. London. London, yeah. And who's that against? Are we allowed to say yet? Or? Uh, it's meant you it's put it out there. Already. Oh, is it already uh, out there? Yeah, yeah. He's a Brazilian, Rafael Alves. And what style is he? Uh, he's just a crazy guy. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> cr what style is he? Crazy <laughs> style. <laughs> yeah. He likes to swing. I see him, I see him like so me. So he did stand up then? Most yeah, stand yeah, yeah. up, yeah. yeah. It, it's, most of his wins by submissions, but... I don't. When I watch him, I don't. I don't rate his ground game as you know. what I mean, I rate more of his striking game yeah. than his ground game. 
Yeah. yeah. So you must be feeling confident in going into this one now. Then after you've obviously you've had yeah. a lot of work with these new guys at uh, the Falcons with John mm. with all the guys there. Yeah. Um, any predictions or are we just going to see how it comes? Are you going to try? Are you going to go for the KO? Are you going to? Yeah, I just feel like I'm, I'm so confident now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to get stoppages now. I feel like it's time to start finishing guys properly. So you're in probably the most fucking stacked division, division yeah. by a mile in that 155 yeah. division. Yeah. Uh, what are your aspirations? Do you want to, like, after this win, do you want to get yeah. in there with some of the, start moving yeah. up to some of these? Literally. Can you just pull out for a schoolie, please, that division on there? Yeah, we should, yeah we should be able to yeah. get it up on the, the screen because uh, obviously, well, just while we're on about this division, obviously, what do you think about Conor McGregor at the minute in this division? Do you think he's done now or do you think he's got all left in? I, don't know, I think he's got something left in him, yeah. but I feel like, like you said, he's stacked. I feel like UFC kind of promote, promoted him well mm. to get to where he was, yeah. but you get to a same point in UFC where even they can't look after you no more. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're on your own. Yeah. You're on your own. I feel like he's reached that point. Do you know what I mean? Right. Pretty, so here we are. Right this way. this uh, division is insane. Obviously, uh, Olivier is the new champion. Yeah, Dan Hooker is the eighth. Um, yeah, Dan Hooker's Dan yeah. still in there. Um, yeah. Obviously, Olivier had that fucking yeah. fight with Michael Chandler. That, that was a sick fight. Only, only yeah. two rounds, but that was a good yeah. fight. Uh, is there anyone in here who you'd got your name on then after your next fight who would you would like to, to go after after this? Honestly, right now, Wow, McGregor's yeah. number nine now. Is that where I he know, is? it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. That's how stacked <laughs> that division is, mate. It's crazy. No, I honestly believe now, like, you know, like my last fight with uh, Fiziev, that's the only fight I came out not upset. Yeah. I feel like I learned something. Yeah, like, I know yeah. what I can do. I'm like, okay. And that's why you even see me on pads. I'm like aggressive. I know what I can do now. Yeah. And uh, I know I can step on any of these guys and even finish any of them. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if you look at number eight, I've already fought him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I can fight any of these guys. So I'm not looking at like, oh, I can't beat these guys. It's, it's, got, it's a different mindset. Yeah, now. yeah. 100%. Do you think that uh, next fight, do you reckon it's going to be Poirier versus Oliveira for the for the title? And do you think that's what's going to be next in that division? Yeah, probably. How would you see no, winning that? Like because obviously... Poirier, Poirier. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah, Oliveira, he's got and he's got the most KOs and the most subs, hasn't he? Yeah. But he, he, he had a really bad dip of form. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it, what I'm saying. In so UFC... That's the proof. <laughs> yeah. Of, do you know what I mean? Look what you can do with a bit you of self-police and hard uh -huh. work. Yeah. 100%. With the right team as well, yeah. I feel, I feel like that. Like <clears throat> he was down, but now he's, he's all over the world. Really. Exactly. Over the world. Um, yeah. Also, Islam Makhachev <clears throat> is he the next Khabib? What do you uh, reckon to him? Obviously, they're trying to promote him. He's, yeah. he's good. Yeah. But I've, I've, I've like in IITT, I've trained a lot of Russians. I'm not writing him off, but I just feel like he's a great fighter. But you know, you can't, you can't compete compare people to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Khabib and he's good, yeah. but he's not Khabib. Yeah, That's yeah. all I'm saying. How yeah. did you find training with Russians? Because whenever I've ended up yeah. training with them in like Thailand and that, they always try and fuck you up, mate. No, they you try. Know, they're, they're, they're crazy. <laughs> they they, 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 they yeah. won't speak to you. No. They, they ignore you. <laughs> Unless you're Russian, <laughs> yeah. they ignore you. Yeah. They won't Literally. speak to you and then they'll only come in inspiring, try and take your fucking head off uh -huh. and then get out and then won't speak to you again. I, cou I couldn't get up for like, for two weeks yeah. on the ground, I was just like, "What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is different." Yeah. And my uh, coach, ATC head coach Conan, said to me, "Trust me. By the end of this camp, you start you have to get up." And I started getting up as well through uh, sparring. I started getting back up. But one day, when I go up, like the rich Russian guy trying to try take my head off, so I kicked him and I snapped his hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think you're just sparring, right? Yeah, He's yeah. done in there. I'm, like, oh, I'm sorry, whatever. We go upstairs. I sat on the table just like this, and Russians sat next to me. All of them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> can forget ready to put a hit on you I'm or like, something. I'm yeah. like, eat my food. And they, I think they, they have like a, a head guy or whatever, a head that uh, look after them all. It's going to me. When when uh, Darush, you say, when Pino Darush comes, you'll have proper sparring then. Yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just grab my plate. <laughs> <laughs> and just move up. Yeah, you go, go, go eat yeah. on my own. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need this. <laughs> yeah, we like that. Um, you were just mentioning before that uh, you were friends with uh, Francis Ngannou, aren't you? Yeah. And I asked you, I said, like, how big is he in real life? And you were like, he's fucking big. Uh, yeah. how, how did that friendship come around? Yeah, Francis is a very nice guy. Like, yeah. he's come to watch me. My, like, my, when I fought in London, he came through. I really can't remember. Maybe because he only lived in France. Yeah. I think he just that. Uh, it's just that guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just, we just clicked. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he just, he see off, when you see him in interviews and off camera, he just seems yeah. a lovely guy. Yeah. Is that how he is in real life? Just a nice, a yeah, nice guy. Yeah, he's a very lovely guy. Even yeah. now, he still messages me like over there, he said, you're, you're next, you just go believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah. It was a very nice message in him. I was like, oh, you know what I mean? Maybe I can do it. Yeah, yeah. Things like that, it just, it, and then uh, we went to 
fights in summer in Vegas. That's the time I spent with him a lot as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, every time I'm in Vegas, he's always like telling me to come out. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah was, That's so good. Uh, yeah. Schooly, do we have any questions that are coming in? Or do Because I know you've got a lot to talk about in MMA. Have you got any questions? You must want to ask some. Of <laughs> yeah. Well, there are some questions coming through on the live stream. Give me two seconds. Me, I'm sweating my head off in here. We need, yeah, we need to I'll sort this room that. out. Where's <laughs> Freddie? I want Freddie to come in and hold a fan <laughs> on me at school. I was thinking, no, I'm sweating, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's a lovely guy, Francis. Yeah, but you also said, though, didn't you? you said, I, I asked, I said, how big is he in real life? <laughs> and you was, what did you say? Yeah. You said, you can't I'm fight this guy. Yeah, you know, he brought, brought me a plate of rice. You know, some <laughs> rice. <laughs> I like now I'm good, thank you. But I'm thinking this guy is so big, right? If he starts with me right now, only way to like get him, you have to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way. Yeah. I remember um when yeah. we were uh with Joe Rogan's and he was saying like the size of Angano's fist yeah. was like the size of his head nearly. Yeah, literally. And what um Joe Rogan had a kicking machine. And yeah. You can kick it or you can I was there. Yeah, yeah. You can kick it or you can punch it. Yeah. And Joe kicked it and he said Francis got higher than his kick with a punch. Yeah. <laughs> that is fucking ridiculous, Imagine, man. Imagine uh, in Vegas, you know the thing that like you hit with a hammer and it scores yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. He had that one hand hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> man, I can't even get it halfway with not, two hands, Yeah, he went with one hand. <laughs> He's showing off. I'm like, this guy's mad. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, Schooly. Tyrone on YouTube wants to know what it was like growing up in Africa and was it hard? <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy one. Yeah, no. Nah, when you're in Africa, like one thing I know is uh, when you're there, you don't know any better. Yeah. You just know what you know. Yeah. When, okay. when you're here, it's like going back there made me realize I'm like, all I need is just knowing what I know here and be there, I'll be all right. Yeah. You're just not, not knowing, you know what I mean? You yeah. Don't better, yeah. You don't have to manage. It's, but I don't teach you certain things at school where you get, t get taught here. So it's, it's, it's difficult out there. But it just it is what it is. Yeah. 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 But it's, you know, it's tough. Yeah. And we've got. <laughs> Jay on YouTube, what does Mark do to alleviate stress from the daily grind of being a full-time fighter? Stress. I think that's that's my therapy, isn't it? Training. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how do you switch off from that though? Like, do you have a, an off button? What do you like? What do you do on rest days? Yeah, on... rest days. <clears throat> because you train hard. I've watched some of the fucking yeah. shit you do. You train really hard. I don't know. I just I, I truly just enjoy that. Even the off days, like now. Before I wasn't reading, but I'm going to like reading books and just doing different stuff. Like you, we can usually have my kids. Yeah, I enjoy more time with my kids now than yeah. more than ever. Like I feel like weekends, like seeing them growing, it makes me like it really inspires me. Like it's, yeah, it's a great yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, we've got Jolt on YouTube. Could you ask Mark what his favorite and least favorite part of fight camps are? Be not making the fucking making the weight on it. It's uh, everyone's least favorite, isn't it? <laughs> That's what I just say. Yeah. yeah, my favorite is just training for your opponent. You know, every day training for him. But the least favorite, just wake up, isn't it? Yeah, I hate you it. You can ask. I think you'll yeah. every single fight will give you yeah, the same answer I'm, on that. There's the fucking no I'm one like, surely. Who's, I don't need this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what we should just do, right? I me, me, no, me and Badger. Yeah. Not we said to before. Yeah. I said. You should only have to like make your fight weight once, and then if your opponent makes it once, you can just say, "Look, should we just fight our fight this yeah, way? Let's yeah. just fight." Yeah, Look, I know you can do fucking one five five. Yeah. You know I can do, do one it. five let's five. Just do it. Let's just. I don't care if you're yeah. one seventy. Yeah. Let's just, let's <laughs> let's just do fight. It, yeah. yeah, but um, I know. Going back to the first part, the favorite part, what you said there about training, with training for the fight and stuff. It must be when you're in a gym like you are now, when everyone you have like Justin and Jack and everyone all fighting at the same time. That's yeah. a buzz, isn't it? When you've got everyone fighting yeah. together. Yeah, one thing I've noticed as well with the lads, like, I think first time, I think John Ford was a bit lazy. Yeah. But I've noticed, like, you know, when it's soon, the, more, the more experienced you are, the more, like, settled back, if you if, you, if it makes sense. Yeah. Like, I know when to push, I know when to switch off. Yeah. Whereas them, like, ah, push, push, push. Yeah, yeah. But I kind of like being with them because I'm like, that's how I used to be. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? I like seeing that, but I also know when to switch off and when to go. Yeah. So, like, now it's my time. I feel like, okay, I'm going to push now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the only difference. Yeah. Uh, we've got another question uh, from Tyrone again. Who would Mark love to fight later down the track? Uh, anyone that's got the belt, that's that's my goal now. I feel like I'm I'm ready to really like start climbing the ranks. So next guy is more of me trying to make uh, make an impression that okay is ready now. Would you like a rematch with Hooker? Definitely. Get yourself straight yeah, in the top definitely. ten. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel like I was I was winning that fight yeah. as well. Yeah, it was just more mistake. I hear my coach saying. Go for a takedown. Me with like language barrier, whatever it yeah. was. I shot in thinking he told me to go for a takedown. Yeah. 
but I didn't expect Hooker to be that tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? It's, it's, oh, it's he's, body he's huge. Frame. He's huge for the weight. Yeah. 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 His uh, body frame, the way it wrapped me around, usually I'd get out, but it's just, it was so tall. It would just bent me. I was like, yeah. I'm done shit. Yeah. <laughs> shit. What have I done? I'm done yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing worse than that moment yeah. in a fight where you think, <laughs> what the fuck have I just done here? I know. Boom. Then it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. What, it was a submission that defeat, It was a submission, it? yeah. What was yeah. it? A choke? Or? A choke, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so if Dustin Poirier wins the title then, would that give you an inspiration knowing that you've been in there with him? You've, hung, you've Yeah, you must know it. He's done rounds yeah. with him. Yeah, but I, what I always say, you don't you don't judge training to actual fight. Okay. Because yeah. it's totally different. It, fight, when it gets to fight, you get to a case about the mindset. It's about, you know what I mean? You get used to this crowd, this experience. Everything counts. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. Training will just tip tapping you're, you're comfortable you're yeah. in a comfortable zone you try there's things. a lot more going on yeah. when there's, there's a lot more on the line when it's yeah. a fight yeah there's a <laughs> so, lot more yeah. yeah so i truly believe it's totally different but you know i'm i'm happy for dustin because yeah. i see where he's coming from if anything he inspires me to, you know what i mean to try and do work because i'm like i spied him i know yeah you know i saw I mean? a pretty f cool video that dustin posted on his instagram or youtube sparring yeah and oh, you, yeah, you were doing yeah. the spin yeah. kicks and stuff yeah. like that yeah 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 i was, I was helping him off that fight yeah well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. If anything, it inspires me now knowing like, okay, I've been in there with him. I know how how I did. Now I can like literally push and get to where he is. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Any more, mate? Yeah, Flexo Fitness. Mark, is the red hair coming back? <laughs> Always, <laughs> <laughs> Always, yeah. Is, is that a signature thing for every fight then? Yeah, it just it's a bit expensive. Like, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? If you're not fighting, you, every time you train, the hair, the color comes off, and you got to do it over and over. And I'm like. Not right now. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, true. yeah. <laughs> uh When the tickets go on sale for is it is it UFC London? Is it? Yeah, London. I'm hoping so. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure. Have Have they Have UFC promoted it yet? Have they advertised it? No, or? it says UFC t TBA to be announced. Right, in right. The arena. So, so we but can't I, talk obviously about we all know it's London. Yeah, because the card, if you look at it, is it's old English fighters. Is so. it? It's to till the main fight. Yeah, and he's the Laurel Murphy on as well. Is yeah. It? Oh, it's gonna be a Paddy Pimbley's on it. Oh, oh, Paddy yeah. Pimbley so on it. Yeah, yeah. Is he your weight? Yeah. Would you want to fight him? Paddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he came to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to talk about that right now because like, I feel like I'm on another path right yeah, now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. If he came to it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. Mark, there's three African champions now in the UFC. Uh, this flies doing, man. Fly They're flying this year. Is in there? the studio. It keeps flying on me. It's, I'm... Uh, <laughs> see what I mean, Mr. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Uh, Mark, with obviously being three African champions in the UFC, I mean, Usman, uh, Stylebender, and Garno, is that inspiration? Yeah, it's very imp inspiration. I, you know, I think anything is possible now. Like, if they can do it, why can't I do it? What fight, Jay on YouTube, what fighter inspires you the most? The most? I used to, honestly, I was a big, big fan of John Jones mm. back in the day, but now I feel like I pick up uh, little bits of everybody. If I see something I like, I'll pick it. So I don't want to be like one person. To be honest, like, most, most thing I, who inspires me the most, I, I can't lie, is Francis, Francis Ngannou right yeah, now. Yeah. Just because the things that he's doing, I feel like, if, even going back home, I feel like, that makes you hunger. Like going back, I'm like, okay, these people don't have what I have to even to. Like, Sometimes I think, how did I get out of this? You know, yeah. I was there. I was like, how did I get out of this? Yeah, it's mad. It's like it's no way out, and he's out of it and doing things for them. That inspired me. Uh, and I've got a question for both of you, really. Um, do you have any tips to work on timing strikes when training solo? Oof, that's a tough yeah, one. No, that is a very <laughs> tough one because timing all comes yeah. off your partner. Your partner, yeah. You need to, yeah, you need, yes, when it's solo, unless you've got like a really, really well, good imagination or something. Yeah. Bag, nah. Maybe get one of these flies in <laughs> there, get a flying room because it keeps flying on me. And, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I like them, uh, them reflex bags. Yeah, they're pretty good. Them, yeah, or a spa yeah. bar or something yeah. like that, getting you something yeah, to move. Around, I mean, yeah. they're, they're going to be the best things yeah. for solo training. Um, but yeah, over in like shadow boxing and just um, having a good imagination and like imagining <laughs> uh, it's going to be tough on your own. Yeah. If you can get like a bit of equipment like that, what Mark just mentioned, or a spa bar or reflex bag or something that's going to come back yeah, at you, come and, back to you and, and give away, you yeah. something to work with, then yeah, maybe that's probably best best job for that. Yeah. Good stuff. And that's it. We're all out of questions. Don't know if you guys have got anything else. Right. No, that, uh, I think we covered everything pretty, pretty much good. there, mate. Yeah. So obviously, if you want to watch Mark fight, um, follow his Insta page. What's your Insta page, mate? It's Mark underscore Jacasey. 
Uh, yep, so if you want to watch any of his fight, upcoming fights, obviously he's going to be in London, uh, 20, uh, 4th of September, sorry. 4th of September, yeah. massive card. There's a lot of good UK guys on it. Laron Murphy, Darren Till's main event, Paddy Pimblett's on there. Derek Brunson is fighting, right? Yeah, yeah, Till yeah. versus Brunson. Um, David Gustafsson is on it as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a fucking good card, oh, isn't yeah. it? He's fighting Paul Craig, isn't he? Paul it? Craig, yeah. He's, he's sick him. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> did, you see, did you see his last, uh, when he snapped that guy's arm? Paul Craig. Yeah. It's mad that he, that guy, yeah, I respect him. He's like, he gets beat up the next minute. He's just, what, what happened there? Yeah. He, he finishes him. His, <laughs> his jiu-jitsu is crazy. Yeah, crazy, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, like, that. He, get, he gets them. He knows to get him tired, isn't he? From, we'll beat him and get, get him tired. The next minute, yeah, yeah come in. I'm going to finish you now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that is uh, the UFC London card. So obviously, tickets should be on sale for that pretty soon. So, Mark, thank you yeah. for coming and joining no us, problem. mate. Just plug the uh, the new Instagram, Liam. For oh us. Yeah, yeah, everyone got followers of a page because uh, Schooly fucked up the last <laughs> one. He got, it he got it taken off us. Um, but yeah, yeah, the Instagram just fucking they just took it off us because they thought someone impersonated me. Obviously, Schooly runs the page. Um, so yeah, everyone can, everyone can go follow the refollow the page, please. The new kicking it page. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Twitter if you want to get us on there as well. Um, we'll be back next week. Next week we have um, a live fight talk special. It's one championship. It's um, Sam A versus Prajan Chai for the bantam. Oh no, for the flyweight title. Also on the card is City Chai vs Typhon Oscan. We're going to watch it live in the studio. Uh, me, Andy Alson, Stephen Malidi and Badger France. Um, we'll be breaking down the fights. And after, we're also going to do like a, on that on the same thing, uh, a Yokao preview. We're going to talk about all the Yokao fights that are on there. We're going to break them all down because that's obviously the week after as well. Um, so, yeah. And then we're back with more guests. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Thank you for joining no us. No problem. And, thank uh, you. See you all soon.